So one of my very awesome Instagram followers requested that I make a video on the coagulation cascade. And I gotta be honest, I don't know any person, including myself, imagine myself, a nursing educator that likes to talk about the coagulation cascade. And it's not to say that I don't think it's interesting or important because it certainly is and it can be. But you know, really it's, it's getting down to talking about the factors and trying to present it in a way that's just not boring and will keep your attention. So I think that probably the best way to do this is to do it in a chart form because it really makes the most sense when you can see these factors and you can see how one turns into the other and the progress to exactly what our outcome is, which is to form a clot over the side of the injury. So when we talk about the coagulation cascade, what we're really talking about is how do we form a clot? So when there's tissue damage, how do we form a clot to protect ourselves and to stop the bleeding? So that's what the coagulation cascade will break down. And what's important about that is as a nursing student, when you're learning about different anticoagulants, this should really jog your brain a little bit to think about, well, how do those different anticoagulants work within the coagulation cascade? Meaning what factor does it affect? And how is it that it's going to impact our final outcome? The goal is, is that not only will you learn the coagulation cascade, but that it's gonna prompt you to think a little bit more about how other things are going to affect it. So we're gonna get right into it. So there's two pathways with the coagulation cascade. There's an intrinsic and there's an extrinsic. Now I'll tell you that the extrinsic pathway is the easiest one, it's very short. So with that said, we're gonna obviously start with the intrinsic, which is the longest one, so we can get through that cascade and then see how the extrinsic fits into it. Now, what I want you to remember for the intrinsic versus the extrinsic is that the intrinsic pathway in, right, the intrinsic pathway is really important in amplifying the cascade, whereas the extrinsic, EX, is really important in initiating the actual cascade. What you'll see as we write down these different factors is one, factors are really just proteins that turn on one another. So they can make a factor active. And how you know that a factor is in its active form is indicated by the letter A. So when we start, let's start with our, again, our intrinsic, which is the longest pathway. The intrinsic pathway is gonna begin with factor 12. And factor 12 turns into factor 12A. A meaning the active form. Now factor 12A is going to change factor 11 to 11A. Then 11A is going to change factor 9 into factor 9A. And then 9A will change factor 10 into factor 10A. And actually factor 10A has a little bit of help in doing that. Factor 9A gets help from factor 8A, and together as a pair, they're the ones that help to turn factor 10 to factor 10A. And of course, if you're thinking, well, where did factor 8A came from? It came from factor 8. Then factor 10A turns prothrombin into thrombin. And how factor 10A does that is with the help of factor 5A, which of course came from factor 5. And thrombin will then turn fibrinogen into fibrin. And fibrin is that mesh covering or that clot that's going to appear at the site of injury. Now moving on to the extrinsic, which I said was the much easier version, it really is. The extrinsic pathway is gonna happen when there's been tissue damage. So tissue factor is gonna be released into the bloodstream when there's been some type of tissue damage. So we'll call that TF. And TF, which is tissue factor, with the help of factor 7A, which of course came from, go ahead, guess, came from factor seven, will then initiate factor 10. And factor 10 from this point, well, we already know it. We talked about it with the intrinsic pathway. It's gonna follow the same route all the way down to the fibrin outcome. So the outcome is that you're a little bit more familiar with how one turns into the other, to the other, to the other, or how one activates the other all the way down until our final outcome. So now you should be familiar with the clotting factors. And again, I want you to use this information and think about some of those anticoagulant medications and those anticoagulant therapies that you know to see how this fits in and why the coagulation cascade is important to know for that reason.